So I've had the Nazgul first generation and actually second and Evoque and now the O3 came out and I was super hyped and excited to get one. So before I get to the actual review and my thoughts on it, let me show you some footage that I shot using this drone. <laughs> It was not to any it was not different to any of my previous videos because this was the footage from the GoPro GoPro 11 stabilized with the real steady which is now part of the actual GoPro player but what's different here is the drone this is the new Nazgul O3 Evoque unit which I'm super excited to talk about well of course the main reason I got this drone for was the actual unit because it promises you a better range. The problem with FPV drones and especially with DJI goggles is that you don't get enough range with the old unit which was the Cadex Vista or the actual GoPro unit but not the O3 unit. So with the old unit you will be lucky if you get like a mile if it's clear range, no mountains blocking anything, nothing, no obstacles. But with this unit they finally promised in some decent range and I took it in the wild and yeah like the reception is a lot better it has two antennas it flies i believe 10 kilometers which is like seven miles it flies a lot further and the, the signal stayed strong throughout my flights also the version that i got is with a gps receiver which is a game changer by the way i first bought the actual unit and i was trying to upgrade my original nazgul with the unit but then i couldn't figure out some things and i, I figured it's actually easier just to buy one that is already complete so i'm selling my nazgul original and i'm using this one right now which is bind and fly and it's ready and it's um it's a little bit easier because the unit is already built into the frame where in the old one you would have to customize somehow maybe buy like a 3d little stand for it or double side tape it it would be kind of like a diy project but here the frame and everything just sits like factory seal i really like it also you get a benefit of an extra antenna plus i got the gps receiver so i'm super happy about that i'm using the same batteries that on the old nazgul i mixed 1400 and 1550 um tattoo batteries for some reason some of my old batteries got some issue where the second plug-in where you plug it into the charger it would like burn on the side and i can't use those anymore so i don't know what's up with that so with the new unit you also get the new goggles so of course i got the new goggles they look more slick they're slimmer they fit better in your backpack if you use the drones for travel and they promise a lot clearer view plus they also have these diopters um i don't know like as far as if it's more clear I wouldn't say so, like to me honestly it doesn't make any difference compared to the old DJI goggles but also the dioptries that you're supposed to just like twist and push left and right and stuff. I don't know what's up with it but I can never figure out how to adjust it like exact to my eyes because I wear glasses and I can never get it to the point where my image is crystal clear. Problem is like it's either crystal clear like up on top or like at the bottom. So the problem is like the focus is like imagine like if it's a 2.8 lens right so like the focus is thin so you only get like this much of a focus so you kind of have to sacrifice part of the image maybe just because i'm blind or whatever 
but that's my problem. Um, so pretty much I'll focus maybe to the middle or the middle like that and everything else is kind of out of focus slightly. Maybe it's just my vision, but that's just my two cents about it. But probably my favorite feature about the drone is the GPS receiver, because finally on the goggles, when you fly, you can see the arrow where is your home point. It tells you how far are you, so let's say 200 meters and whatever, so you can kind of know how far are you and you know if the signal should be good or not. It tells you strength of a signal. It tells you how fast you're going. And by the way, I've flown this thing like 150 kilometers an hour, like maybe 110 miles an hour, super, super fast. It picks up very quick. And um, yeah, I just like to have the visual in front of me. And I like to have a home point direction if I need to go back, especially if I'm in a location where I'm not comfortable with. Now the next thing, and I kind of knew it was going to be a gimmick, is the actual camera in the drone, which is supposedly is the same camera as the DJI Avada has. And it's the same type of camera and you get the same color science and decent alike color as on a regular DJI Mavic drone. So to a lot of people, this would be a game changer because you get better quality. But to me, I bought this drone to still put the GoPro on top of it because I get the benefit of the real steady. You can stabilize the footage so much better and it's so much noticeable, especially for cinematic videos. For people who just buy this to race, I don't think you don't need the GoPro. Actually, you don't need it because it's the extra weight and it kills your battery. But for me, the, the difference is significant. Even though the DJI camera has 10-bit color and all that, but I just feel like the shadows are crushed more, they're a bit darker. Where it was the GoPro 11 footage, I shouldn't log and then I color grade using my LUT and my color settings. But I just feel like it's not just even more stabilized. I have more control over color. And also the most important thing, I can put on my ND filter so I can get motion blur and the footage doesn't like stutter. You can put the ND filter on your drone camera, but then it's your eyes. So if you fly into a darker place or whatever, it's going to be darker. So like I like to see with my eyes using the camera, but then record with the other camera where I could have all my settings set in manual. And then here I could have like 60 frames per second. So the refresh rate is fast and I can see better and there is no latency and stuff like that. But I can just like put 24 frames per second cinematic in the filter and still use this camera to like view and watch what's going on, fly using this camera and also record. I think I'll get into trouble. You see where I'm going? So if you're buying this drone just to race, have fun. You don't need a GoPro. Record with the camera that on board. It's a lot better than the original camera, of course. But if you're trying to use this as your cinematic camera, it's not even close to the GoPro. I noticed that this drone is super fast and it does get faster with wind if you fly in the same direction. But if you're flying back, it's still no problem. I flew in kind of heavy winds and it had no problem flying back and for it. You just have to be mindful that it's going to use more battery if you fly back. The controls are also a little different because the controller is smaller, which I like because it's more compact. I hated the old controller, like the Phantom 3 days controller size, but it is smaller. So you hold it a bit different. So you kind of have to adjust and get used to it. But I got used to it in a couple days and also you have to like adjust the control sticks so it doesn't uh, wobble. It has to be like manually adjusted with a screwdriver, but it's super easy. So because of all that, it's you get a smaller package and it's a lot more travel friendly. But in a nutshell, it's the same drone. It's just better vision, better range. I mean, that's a lot of things. You get your location. It's almost like the Mavic drone, but without the sensors. So I would compare it to actually the Avada because Avada is not good with all the sensors as well. Obstacle avoidance is almost non-existent, which is the same thing as here, but you do get GPS rescue. I haven't had a chance to check it out and test it out. I set it up in the configuration, but I haven't tested it out and hopefully crossing my fingers it works. The idea is before you lift off, you have to wait until you get a certain number of antennas of GPS coverage. Then you know that the GPS rescue will work. If you just fly right away, it doesn't pick up the antenna, the GPS, actually that will not work. So you have to wait before you fly up and then once you're up in the air and the signal gets lost, it's supposed to go back without avoiding any obstacles towards the direction. And then you can overtake, theoretically, and just fly back home. Now, I also happened to already crash this drone once and I hit the palm tree. Uh, going pretty fast. I think it was 16 miles an hour, something like that. So yeah, it survived pretty good. I broke one of the arms. I was able to fix it super easy. I actually just ordered an arm on the Amazon. And I also had to replace the motor because the motor ripped like right out of the cables ripped right out of the motor, so I couldn't solder anything. I'm not good with that anyway, so I just replaced the motor and the arm, it would cost me like $30 and I was good to go the next day. If I would compare this drone with any other drones, I flew Protec 35, Avada, 
the original Nazguls. I would say this Nazgul is faster. Of course, you can't really compare it to Avado Product 35 because those are Cinewhoops and they're super loud. They have like this high pitch noise, but they have their own place in the FPV, especially if you're flying close to people, slower speeds, more maneuverable, where this drone just picks up and flies. Super fast, super fun. It's totally different animal. Um, it's light, especially without a GoPro, it just gone. If I would recommend this to someone, this is a perfect drone to somebody who's actually started out into the hobby and loves to rip the drone through, I don't know, going down the ridge of the mountain or just fly super low to the water at the beach or something. I don't know, it's super, super, super fun. It just have to, you just have to be mindful about the risks you doing because the drone is fast and if you don't know what you're doing I would rather spend more time in a simulator I still don't know how to like land it as good and properly I, sometimes I just drop it from like this height and it sucks it's a lot more fun than regular drones and every time I fly one my heart starts pumping and it's just adrenaline rush it's super cool but it's safe as long as you don't fly over the people and you don't hit no one well that is it for me thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below don't forget to like this video subscribe do all the good stuff see you next time peace